So in this video, I'm going to talk about the cardiac action potential of a contractile cell. The action potential of contractile cardiac myocytes has five phases characterised by a stable resting membrane potential and a prolonged plateau phase. So in phase zero, we have rapid depolarization as membrane permeability to potassium decreases and fast sodium channels open. Now going to phase one, we have early rapid repolarization as sodium permeability decreases. We now have phase two, which is a plateau phase. Here, there is a continued influx of calcium through L-type calcium channels. This maintains depolarization for approximately 300 milliseconds. Phase three, we have rapid repolarization due to inactivation of calcium channels and ongoing efflux of potassium. Phase four, we have restoration of ionic concentrations, thereby restoring the resting membrane potential of approximately minus 90 millivolts. For the majority of the action potential, contractile myocytes demonstrate an absolute refractory period. During this time, no stimulus, regardless of the magnitude, can incite further depolarization. A relative refractory period exists during phase three. So now just to quickly discuss how antiarrhythmic drugs affect the myocardial action potential. So in contractile cells, sodium channel blockers or Vaughan Williams class one medications reduce the slope of phase zero and the magnitude of depolarization. So the slope will look more like this when a sodium channel blocker is used. As an example of a class one A antiarrhythmic used to do this is procainamide or quinidine. We also have potassium channel blockers which are a Vaughan Williams class three medication, and these delay phase three repolarization. This lengthens the duration of the action potential and the refractory periods. As we see here, phase three occurs later when a class three antiarrhythmic is used because potassium channels have been blocked during phase two. An example of a class three Vaughan Williams medication is amiodarone. Thanks for watching this video, and in the next video, I'll discuss the cardiac action potential of cardiac pacemaker cells.